Hi, I'm Elena. In this video, I'd like to help you plan your trip to Hong Kong with suggestions of things to see and do and some helpful tips which you tend to discover at the end of your trip and then wish you'd known right from the beginning. You probably wouldn't guess from looking at me, but I was born in Hong Kong and have been back several times since I left. So I thought I'd share with you my knowledge of my favorite country in the world. Let's get started. When it comes to shopping, Hong Kong is full of designer stores. You can find them everywhere. But if you're not willing to pay Gucci and Louis Vuitton prices, then the markets are your best bet for a great shopping experience. Temple Street Night Market is on every night. It used to be a favorite of mine, but not so much in recent years. It sells a lot of knickknacks and practical things like torches, some souvenirs, and then at a particular point, you won't want to take your children any further. Yeah. My favorite market is Tung Choi Street Market. It's a great place for souvenirs and clothes, especially to buy Chong Sams, a traditional Chinese dress. Also, when you're in Tung Choi Street, don't walk down just the middle of it, go around the sides as well. There are lots of little shops that come off the street that are just as interesting. Stanley Market is a must do and is on the far side of the island. For the more scenic route, take bus 6, 6A or 6X from Exchange Square. The market sells beautiful paintings, bags and jewelry as well as personalized souvenirs, such as ink, stamps, and your name written in Chinese characters. Don't forget to haggle. The store owners are expecting it, so don't pay full price for anything. My tip for haggling is to pretend you're not really that interested and start walking away. They'll usually call you back, offering to lower the price. The same also goes for the Jade Market. One thing you can do is to walk around inside, get a good price for something, and then compare it to those at the door. Also, don't let them pressure you into buying anything. They can be really persuasive. How haggling is done in Hong Kong is that every stall holder will have a calculator. On the calculator, they'll first put their price, then you'll put the price that you offer, usually about half of what they said. They'll say no and put in their price until you find a price you can agree on. For inexpensive clothes shopping, the best place I found by far is the Argyle Center. So to find it, get out at Mong Kok Station and leave via exit D. You turn up Argyle Street and it's on your left a few shops down. Look out for the silver signage. If you've hit the bridge, you've gone too far. The Argyle Center is girl heaven. I'm serious. Full of shoes, clothes, makeup and accessories. A lot of the fashion that's available there you can get away with in Asia, but it might seem a little strange in any other Western country. However, you can find some real gems. A lot of it's one size fits all and they do have small changing cubicles so that you can try it on. You can buy pretty much anything there, from colored contact lenses and Hello Kitty lensless glasses to socks, tights, earrings, bracelets, jeans, shorts, and I could go on, but I won't. There are several floors, all packed with things, so prepare to spend a few hours, or probably more. I can easily spend a whole day in there. In part three, I will be talking about activities other than shopping which you can do while in Hong Kong, from theme parks like Disneyland and Ocean Park, to trips to Lantau Island and the Big Buddha, and more. You can click on the link to go to the next video or to go back to part one and leave any questions in the comment section below.